really pretty little morning fish. Woo! And the sun is not even up over the treetops yet. Love it. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin. As you can tell, it is a little bit too early for sunglasses, but we are getting on the water this morning. I've got about eight or so different rods rigged up with nothing but old school lures. It is early fall in Texas, and we are on one of my favorite little lakes, Lake Bastrop, just outside of Austin, Texas. It has been a hot minute since I have been on the water anywhere, much less on this particular body of water, so I really don't know exactly what is going on. I do know that this time of year the fish love to school up in deep water, and there's plenty of it here. I also know that last year I had a good little run throwing some soft plastic jerk baits like the Sluggo up shallow in the reeds and weeds, and I got some really nice fish. I don't have a specific lure in mind for today's episode other than to get out there and try to catch some bass on nothing but vintage tackle. So we're first at the ramp today, that's always a good sign. It is late September and uh, as I'm sure you know if you follow the channel, I have not been on the water in a hot minute or like a hot month. Unfortunately, I've been traveling more than the Fuller Brush Salesman for work and the old four wheel drive sleigh was in the shop. So when I got back this week, the first thing on my list was to get the old retro wagon back in the drink. Took a quick trip up to Lake Austin and struck out. That is a lake that I have not yet figured out. I've caught a few nice fish on it, but overall I'm still kind of struggling on that body of water. I do like this lake. I feel like it is reminiscent of the way that I grew up fishing. It's got a ton of weeds, a ton of reeds, and just a really a lot of different opportunities and methods on which you can catch a large mouthed bass. No idea what we're gonna be getting into today but I do have eight rods rigged up with everything from lures for schooling bass to chop water lures to crankbaits and of course a soft plastic jerk bait or two. What I think I'm gonna do right now is head over to a spot where I've gotten some uh, fish on top and also on jerk baits in the past, a little shallow pocket up by some reeds and if I happen to see any breaking fish on the way, we'll make a stop. It is early enough to be thrown at top water, but I think the key on a challenge like this is to strike early. And the first bait I'm gonna throw is one of my confidence baits, at least as of late, a soft plastic jerk bait. If you can tell, this is a bait that we have not yet thrown on the channel, and one that I recently picked up in like a little eight pack. This is the old school man's shadow. It is one of the coolest soft plastic jerk baits that has long since been discontinued, and you can tell it is in the shape of a little fish. It's got a nice fish profile, flat on the side, and I've got it rigged up with, I think that's a three-aught or a four-aught sluggo style hook. I did buy an, a single eight pack, but I was just scouring the boat for like five minutes and I cannot find the other seven. So hopefully I get a fish on this guy because if I don't, it might be a one and done deal. I do see a few nice looking splashes up shallow. I'm gonna get in here, I'm in nine feet now. The goal is to get up into six to four foot. There's a really nice reed edge up here with some weeds that are off it. And I've done really well getting plastic jerk baits way up deep in little pockets or funnels. 
Might be a little bit early for that approach in the season, but we'll give it a shot. God, it looks nice out. Oh, that was a fish. Okay, let's get on this. <laughs> if I catch a fish, I'm gonna have to find those other seven shadows. Can't believe I lost them, like already. Woo, this guy looks good. Ooh, okay, I better do some initial observation before I lose my only shadow. As you can see, it's two-toned. It's silver on the top and blue on the bottom, and it's really cool. Every time I jerk this, I feel like it does like a really nice sort of flash. This thing is gonna get absolutely cranked in a second. Oh. Oh, that was a fish. Oh, there he is. <laughs> First one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish, too. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Butte on the old man's shadow. He definitely cracked it. I kind of let him eat it as I'm prone not to do, and luckily that worked out. A really pretty little morning fish. Woo! And the sun is not even up over the treetops yet. Love it. Oh, he's warm. <laughs> so there we go. There's the fish, and there's the bait, and oh yeah, I think that thing's still in good shape, so luckily I can probably throw that again. Wow, nice. So hopefully I can slide the hook back in this because again, I just don't want to waste precious time looking for lures that I probably left at home. Oh, back in business. Nice. <laughs> my hat's crooked. My glasses have crap on them. <laughs> Welcome to Retro Bassin. All right, so while the boat is turned around and before I kind of turn it back into the area I'm fishing, you can see this nice little reed bank you can see that fish just jumped. This could be a morning. Oh man. It's good to be out again. I'll tell you that. Actually, I don't think I've been on bass drop since I've had a working trolling motor, come to think of it. I don't know if you recall, but we finished, <laughs> we fished about half the season last year uh, trolling motor free, which in many ways was quite liberating. Is that a bass or a carp behind me? I can't tell. Drop a comment, let me know. So that I can kick myself a week after fishing that I should have turned around and casted that. <laughs> I think that was a carp. Oh, and that's a fish though. Oh, that's a bass. That's a bass. <laughs> oh! Come on, Mr. Shadow. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Look at that. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> Oh boy. Ooh, there we go. Another uh, early morning bass. Man, these guys, when I pick this up, it feels like I'm picking up a hot potato. They are super, super warm. Oh man, so both these guys have been pegged right in the top of the mouth on the old shadow. And, whoo, that was fun. If I can unhook him, we'll be set. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why is it when you want a fish to stay pegged, they jump off, and then when you've got them in the boat, you can't get the hook out? How does that work? Ah, oh, there we go. 
Oh, uh, well, there we go. Nice uh, little Texas bass. Ah, nice little one pounder. He hit hard. That was really cool. All right, buddy. <laughs> we'll give him the Lindy a send off. So let's go ahead and see if we can salvage my man's shadow for yet another fish. I kind of hope we can. I don't want to miss or waste a precious time in the morning farting around, um, banging around tackle boxes of the boat trying to find the rest of these. Uh, yeah, you know what? Honestly, so far, so good. That thing definitely holds up uh, pretty, pretty well. We'll see if it stays uh, pinned when I cast it again. And it's interesting, but even though the hook is pretty exposed, as you can see, this is a really weedless bait. I don't know if it's the way that the nose is just kind of having this thing slide through the weeds, but uh, I have not caught a single weed with about, ow, caught myself, with about 15, 20 minutes of casting this thing. A couple nice little bassy looking swirls up ahead. Ho, 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 ho. Oh. Another nice thing I'm realizing about the body design of the man shadow is because it's flat, it really takes a while to settle. Some other soft plastic jerk baits tend to dive a little bit quicker. This thing just almost sort of shimmies down into the weeds, which I love. But it doesn't plane too much. One of the worries I had with this is that because of that design, it was gonna to wanna to stay up top. It actually dives quite nicely. All right, we're getting back into a little money pocket here. Woo! I don't think I've gotten back in here this time of year without getting at least a bite or two. So we'll see what happens. Oh, nicer fish there. <laughs> I tried to retro that one. I did my best. Oh, that's a nicer fish. Yeah, buddy. Come on, girl. <laughs> All right, well, that fish is actually about the same size as the other two, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, that was cool. Cast it right up in there into a little pocket, and whoo, she smoked it. A nice little one and a half, two pounder, huh? Not too bad. We'll see what kind of shape the old man shadows in after this one. Nice. Skinny, this one needs to eat a little bit. Well, I can rig it up again. We'll see what kind of shape she's in. I mentioned that I had a tough day on Lake Austin and it is true. Uh, I have not yet really figured out these deep, rocky Texas lakes. I know there is just a ton of great fishermen that really smoke some nice, nice fish on Travis, on Austin, uh, even Lady Bird Lake. Um, but for me, I tend to be most at home in these shallow, weedy lakes. I don't know if it has something to do with growing up fishing on the tidal Potomac River for bass or on the Severn and Magothy for pickerel, which again, were really shallow water fish. But to me, there's nothing I like more than just getting slow and low, creeping up along the bank, using a little finesse bait like this to pick apart different pockets and pull some fish, big fish, out of really, really shallow water. I do need to work on my deep Texas Lake skills, but I don't know. I do feel like I'd be pretty good in some shallow Florida lakes, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he hit it and started swimming at me. Threw me off a little bit. Woo! Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Man alive. The old man shadow is getting it done. My single man shadow. <laughs> ah. Okay, so that guy hit it kind of funny. He actually has it through his bottom lip, so I have no idea how he hit that, but that might add something to do with why I had trouble uh, getting him in. Ah, oh, it's a small little fat bass, isn't it? Look at that guy. <laughs> I'll turn around here. <laughs> he's got like a little chunk of a belly on him, doesn't he? <laughs> Woo, he's been eating good.
Well, we did our best to try to catch some fish deep and even got back shallow to try to get a few more off the bank, but it was not in the cards today. Had a pretty good morning though, started off with four nice bites, and I think I pretty much had all those fish in the boat by about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. I did have about eight rods rigged up today with different old school schooling bass and sort of fall fishing type lures, but only one caught fish. So we'll talk about that one real quick and also the setup. The reel I was using today was an Abu Garcia Ambassador. This is a 5500C. I actually love the look and feel of these old school Abus. And this thing is rigged up with, I think that's probably 15 pound mono. The rod is, I actually got this from my neighbor Dave's dad, who had a really cool tackle box he shared with me and the viewers at Retro Bassin, and he gave me a couple rods, one of which is this. This is a Shakespeare Maglite baitcaster. I just love the old school handle on this thing, and this is pretty much my favorite setup for soft plastic jerk baits. So here is the lore in question and the lone man's shadow. At some point when it's not so hot, I'm gonna have to figure out where the rest of that eight pack went, but luckily this single bait got me through all four fish, and honestly, this thing could probably catch another four. This is a really cool bait. It is, I think that's probably a five inch soft plastic jerk bait. It's got a two-tone color, silver on the top, blue on the bottom, and it is in that shad shape, thus the name Shadow. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of fishing with the man Shadow before, but Considering the success I had on soft plastic jerk baits right here last year, I figured this might be a good thing to throw, and it definitely was. I like this thing a ton, and I need to find the rest of that eight pack so that I can uh, hopefully get a few more fish on it. We're gonna head back to the studio now and dig through my old treasure trove of vintage catalogs and hopefully find a spread or two dedicated to the man shadow. We just got back from Lake Bass Drop, and what did I find tucked in between two Plano tackle boxes? <laughs> but the rest of my pack of man's shadows. I'm actually really glad that I found this. I was a little bit worried that I left it on a boat seat and it blew off somewhere on the highway. So I'm pretty stoked that I've got a few more of these things to fish with. I think there's another, uh, I don't know, five or seven of them in this little pack. Here is the packaging on the back. You can see a little bit of rigging instructions and also I'm sure some tips on how to fish the man's shadow. This is an interesting bait. I was really glad to fish with it today. It's one that I have not spent a lot of time fishing with. It came out sometime in the 1990s in that sluggo craze when everybody had their own versions of that bait. I will definitely keep this thing tied on throughout the fall and the next time we get out there I will definitely get some underwater footage of this little thing in action. I did dig through my old treasure trove of vintage Bass Pro Shops catalogs, and the only spread I could find was in this, the 1995 Master Catalog. Kind of makes sense, that was the year I graduated high school, and that was definitely the peak of the sluggo craze. I also found an old school man's decal that I've got to put to good use somewhere. Although it is not a huge spread on the man's shadow itself, it is part of a bigger spread of man's baits. A nice little two-pager with a ton of discontinued old school pieces of gold here. Look at this thing, the alternator, the limit finder, woo, some goodies. Well, there is the shadow in a black shad color and just a little description that I'll go ahead and read right now. The shadow from man's may be the most versatile bait ever developed. It walks, darts, jumps, flits, flashes, and flutters just like a live shad. No other bait comes close to imitating the real thing. Order by color, night glow, silver shiner, thread fin shad, shimmering shad, and golden shiner. These baits come in two different sizes. There is a four and a half inch uh, 10 pack and also a five and a half inch 10 pack, both available for $2.99. Not too bad. Before we send off for the day, I do wanna pause for a new little segment we've been doing on the channel, the Bass and Bud of the Week. Every week uh, that I remember, we feature one Bass and Bud who is out there fishing at old school with vintage rods, reels, lures, and equipment. 
And this week's Bass and Bud of the Week is a new friend on Instagram, Bobby from the Ozarks Fisherman. Bobby definitely likes to fish it old school, and he told me that his favorite rod is a Johnson 100B, and his favorite old school lure, no surprise, is the Ozark Mountain Woodchopper. Bobby puts out some great Instagram content and is definitely worth a follow. If you would like to be considered for Bass and Bud of the Week honors, just go ahead and post a picture of yourself on Instagram, hashtag fish it old school, and if you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you back here next Saturday, same time, same place. But until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.